joining us this morning is New York Congresswoman, Congressman Claudia Tenney. Congressman, what kind of action do you think this administration will take on Syria? I think I'd take the advice of our great General Mattis, who's uh, Secretary of Defense, who's saying they're waiting to determine what's going on. I, I just heard for the first time that you said that uh, President Macron or Prime Minister Macron mm -hmm. has said that they've proven that the chemical weapons are a cause of Syria. Uh, I think a lot of Trump supporters are hesitant about him getting back into Syria, although chemical weapons use is something that we all condemn on the international uh, world, and it's just something that we should all stick together on, and I'm glad that it, it France and some of our other allies are going to stay with us and support uh, condemnation of this and right. making sure that we're not just going to draw an artificial red line and walk away. Uh, we need to be strong on this, and I think the president is... I, I don't look at the president's Twitter, so... Uh, uh, you I usually see it on the news. Why don't you follow the president on Twitter? Because, again, he seems to at yeah. least drive the policy debate in some way. You know, I, I'm, honestly, I get caught up in what I'm doing here on Capitol Hill and working, worrying on my, about my issues. Uh, when I have time, I do go through the president's Twitter feed. I, I love that it's very transparent. He, t he messages a lot. Um, I do think that he messages uh, on a volume basis, maybe not on so much of a qualitative basis, but I think that you can, you can look at, I mean, I think it's great that he's transparent and he's, over, he's you know, stepping over the media because we all have that problem with the media and trying to get our message out. So I think that is a great messaging tool for him and, you know, we all use Twitter. Uh, but I do think right. you can't just read literally into every tweet that's coming out. Leah, do you have a question on Syria before we move on? Because yeah. we mentioned Emmanuel Macron, mm -hmm. and I will point out the U.S. and France have positioned warships armed with cruise missiles mm -hmm. within firing range of Syria. And then we have uh, Prime Minister uh, Theresa May meeting with her cabinet mm -hmm. to discuss Syria today. Yeah, I'd really like to hear sort of what the insight is from Congress right now on what the plans should be in Syria because, you know, you have the, the Pentagon looking at what targets they may be able to hit or they may want to hit. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm sure that they're looking at intelligence to determine where uh, Syrian assets are being moved because of the fact that this is this is uh, retaliation is expected at this point. So what's the word on the Hill as far as, you know, what, what would be the appropriate reaction? Well, I think there's obviously concern depending on which camp you're in. I, I heard some conversations yesterday uh, on the floor and in, in uh, our caucus about uh, our conference, I should say, about whether wh whose power is it to do this? The Congress to declare war, the president, you know, you hear that a lot. But I think right. it's really instructive that uh, General Mattis is taking a very deliberative approach, and I think that he's waiting uh, to see what the real cause is, how we should act, what assets we have in place. And I think that uh, makes me feel good that we have a deliberative approach to how we're handling this. And, uh, and as I said earlier, I, uh, President Trump's supporters don't want us to get into some protracted battle in Syria. Obviously, we need to stand up for what's right in the world, and we need to be the leader. But I think that doing that in a deliberative way and making sure we know what's happening and we have a very uh, strategic uh, response, I think, is really important. You were talking about mm -hmm. your constituency, the people mm -hmm. who voted for you, who live in your district, Congressman, and mm -hmm. that gets right to our, my next question. Tensions over tariffs and trade. Mm -hmm. China's Commerce Ministry said overnight that the U.S. is not, if it's not sincere, that means the U.S., in its attempts at a dialogue, trade negotiations will be impossible. These comments come after some kind of conciliatory statements from China's President Xi Jinping, who vowed mm -hmm. to further open the country's economy, lower import taxes even on automobiles. Today, the president is going to meet with congressional leaders and governors to focus on subsidies for farmers who might be hurt from mm -hmm. this trade battle. Again, tariffs announced by China on, on many farm products, in, including pork right. and soybeans. Congressman, your thoughts on the negotiations mm -hmm. so far? Yeah, well, look, China is a huge issue. It's probably, as General Mattis, again, hate to keep quoting him, but I think he's a great leader, uh, has said China is one of the most difficult long-term problems that we have facing us in terms of, uh, on many levels, economic, politically. And uh, right now, China, I just came back from a trip to South Korea, Taiwan, and uh, meeting in uh, the Dalai Lama, actually, and the Tibetan government in exile in India to see just the threat and the aggression that China has. I think it's great that the president is having open negotiations with China and saying, look, somebody has to stand up for our district and our, our country on this trade issue. 
Uh, Trump won my district probably very handily by nearly 16 points because of the trade issue. I have a, the Rust Belt of New York. We've lost all kinds of jobs mm -hmm. you know, because of NAFTA. Right now, uh, we're seeing, you know, like uh, dairy is a huge issue. Uh, you talk about soybeans, crops. Mm -hmm. uh, but dairy, uh, New York is the number three dairy producer in the nation. And we're seeing an unfair trade advantage, just for example, with NAFTA and the Canadian pricing on class seven milk. There are a lot of issues that are affecting us and that I think the president's standing up and forcing China to the table, letting them uh, react. You'll, you're seeing that China has backed down a little bit and that we need to confront this. And I think the president's attempting to do that. And trade is a big issue in my district. We need jobs. We need uh, to bring our companies back. And I heard you mention earlier something really important that's happening is that for once we now have a competitive tax rate for corporations. I run a small business, or used to. I, get, I can't anymore now that I'm a member of Congress, but my family business is in upstate New York and has been there since 1946. And seeing a reduction in taxes and benefits going to the lower and middle income taxpayers uh, has been a huge help to our community against the oppressive tax regime coming from Albany. So uh, yeah, a little bit of relief on the federal side has been a big boon for our district and uh, giving us a competitive advantage and knowing that many of the companies that I've spoken with who were once great uh, iconic businesses in New York and founded there uh, are coming back. They're coming back to the United States because of tax reform. And that's something that uh, I really give a lot of credit to our House leadership. Paul Ryan shepherded it through. The president was instrumental. And that's something that showed that we could get together as Republicans, which we need to do, and, and fight for things that matter to our lower and middle income taxpayers. And that as much as the Democrats wanted to cry the tax re relief, uh, it's working, and people know it. They feel Congress it in their paychecks. They see right. it. Well, Congressman, speaking of Paul Ryan, who should take yeah. his place? Give me oh, a you know, that's a... <laughs> Hey, let me first say, you know, my, uh, my sincerest uh, wishes to Paul Ryan. He has been an elegant, strong leader. He's been maligned by some. Um, he's a policy guy. He's a conservative. He's someone I respect very much. You know, even as a new member, I've heard you hear all this terrible stuff, but he has led our, our, uh, our House and our, our conference with dignity. Uh, I don't agree with him on 100% of the issues, but he's put together and cobbled together uh, a number of great initiatives. He's had a number of wins. Obviously, we, we, we wish that Obamacare repeal and replace right. could have been passed in the Senate, but uh, I think he's great. In terms of our leadership, we have great leadership in the House. It's one thing that I've learned. I came in here as, a, as an independent mm -hmm. conservative, and I look and see that, you know, it's tough to govern with a group that's so diverse as the Republican conference. Right. Uh, we have, it's a lot of work to put us together. I mean, the Democrats stick together no matter what, but we actually stand on principle and policy. So right. um, I'm supportive of, uh, I, let's see how, what shakes out this year. Paul Ryan says he's going to take us through to the finish uh, next right. January 3rd. Let's need, let him keep doing that. Well, Congressman, you all need on the Republican side a big kumbaya moment, holding hands yeah. to, to fight back the Democrats in November. I agree. Thank you, Congressman. I agree. Thank you so much. Claudia Tenney.